Good evening, I'd like to call to order the Germantown School Board Personnel Committee meeting. Today is October 14th and we're starting the meeting at 4.30. First item is I'll take roll call. Ms. Higginbotham? Here. Mr. Pollock? Here. Mr. Brown, myself, is here. We're all here. Next agenda. Uh, next item is agenda revisions and approval. Mike, is everyone virtual? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, I think we do have an agenda revision tonight. Uh, Michelle is joining us. There's time constraints tonight, understandable, so we're going to switch the order. So I'll hear a motion to uh, make an agenda to the to the uh, or make a revision to the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to the agenda with the following change: moving item seven, new business. Uh, after the approval of the minutes, so between items four and five. Okay, do I hear a second? A second. Okay, any discussion? I'll just add the note that uh, our guest speaker tonight has understandable uh, scheduling issues, so we, that's the reason for the move. So with that, I'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion passes. We'll move right to agenda item four, approval of the September 16th minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the September 16th, 2024 meeting minutes. A second. First I have a first and a second. Yeah. Any discussion? What the hell? Okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. What the hell? Aye. aye. Yeah, personally. Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, the approval of the minutes passes. And we move to the new item five, which is. Uh, Michelle for r and Insurance, and I'll let Mike do the introduction to the section. Thank you. Yes, we have uh, Michelle Falke from r and Insurance with us. Uh, she will be going over uh, renewal for insurance and benefits, specifically dental health and vision, along with some information on um, other benefits that we offer. Um, this is uh, a time of year when this process occurs for us because we're a January 1 renewal. Um, we're very happy with where we're at relative to um, having a year, uh, a solid year under our belt of um, being self-insured. Uh, Michelle is going to go into detail on where we're at and what we should expect moving forward. Um, with that, Michelle, do you want me to go to your presentation or do you want to speak at all first? in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle's muted. Her mic is muted. It is? Yeah, it says it in the bottom. She's mark. got herself muted. You're muted. Yeah, but she made it seem like she couldn't hear us either. Now. <laughs> All right, we're in business. There we go. <laughs> Found it. Okay. You want to close that chat, Mike? Yeah. So, Michelle, do you want to present to the group at all right now, or do you want me to go right into your presentation? Yeah, whichever way you guys want to do it. I can I can either drive the slides by doing a screen share, or you can go ahead and do it. Either way. Uh, Why isn't she screen sharing? Yeah, you can do it. Go ahead. Okay. And I'm going to put that back to this other screen. <coughs> Perfect. Just give me one second to pull the right one up. Everybody can see, right? Yep, yep, yep. Terrific. So I don't know, I'm not, I wasn't able to hear the introduction. Um, my name is Michelle Froke, and I'm the Employee Benefits Consultant. I have the pleasure of working with the Germantown School District on your benefit plans. Um, today what I wanted to do is just give a recap of what we're looking at for your 2025 uh, benefit offerings for the staff. Uh, 
now, before we kind of get into all of the numbers, um, it, we figured it would be uh, beneficial to just take a, a few minutes to look at healthcare trend. So kind of what's going on in the healthcare industry and how that's impacting costs. As you've probably seen in the news um, and you're paying attention, inflation is you know pretty much up everywhere, but there's nowhere quite like it is in health insurance. So when it comes to, well, and more than just health insurance, just health care. So the cost of going to the doctor, the, the cost um, of what the doctors are charging for all of the medical equipment, the prescriptions that are included, um, everything when it comes to health care is increasing at a faster pace than all other goods and services combined. So when we're looking at the graph here, you're looking at just the past 24 years, and you can see that health care, medical care, has increased well over 100, you know, over 120%, where the rest of inflation is at about 86%. You're not seeing that same trend follow suit when we're talking about the funding that schools are getting. So the second part of this, um, you know, if we're looking from 2020 to 2024, when we're talking about health, uh, excuse me, um, spend that school districts get per pupil, not matching that uh, health care trend that we're seeing. So it's always been a challenge. I know as board members or committee members, you're probably always looking at this big ticket item when it comes to health care. And it's just the schools, schools finances aren't able to keep up with trend. What's causing some of that? When we look at health care trend for, a, for an organization that is fully insured. Now, whereas um, being self-funded in Germantown, we have a little bit more control over some things. But when groups are fully insured, the national average for that starting point of where health care um, trend is or where health insurance companies are starting for their increases, um, they're starting at 8%. So that means companies like United Healthcare or Anthem or Network Health, um, you know, all of the all of the big box healthcare systems for, or excuse me, health um, carriers are starting at 8%. And then if claims are running well for a group, it's going down from 8%. If claims aren't running well for a group, it's going above 8%. That's nationally. In the state of Wisconsin, we're actually the fifth most expensive state when it comes to healthcare. So our numbers are even higher than that. So I know I'm painting a pretty bleak picture, but just <laughs> stay with me. Um, some of the reason that the healthcare spend has continued to really increase in the last 24 years, um, specifically, we have more people with catastrophic claims. Fortunately, some of these things are life changing. So we have people with transplants. I have several of my districts have transplants. There's lung transplants, kidney transplants. Um, there are stem cell transplants. There are more people with brain cancers and the treatments that are helping people prolong their life. But that is always coming at a cost. So there's more catastrophic claims. There is all of the increase in um, pharmacy spend. So in the United States and New Zealand, the only two um, countries in the entire world that allow advertisement for their, for their prescription drugs, we also have the highest cost because the industries are charging, uh, they're paying so much, billions, literally billions of dollars for um, advertising, and then that comes in the cost then for us as users. And then the providers wanting uh, their, ever since COVID, providers have decreased in number and so they're looking to get higher reimbursements from the insurance companies. So this is just a snapshot of what's kind of driving up the cost right now. So the problem is that healthcare costs continue to rise. The good news is um, here in Germantown, we have a solution. So this, the, we have some really great story to share with you and um, the staff, I think, for this year. I know when I met you last year, we were just talking about like just kind of getting our feet under underground um, for moving to self-funding and that we had to make some changes last year because of the um, transition from your first year of self-funding to your second. But the good news is for this year, even though we're seeing rising costs overall in healthcare, what the Germantown School District did um, with, I like to say, with the help of our and our insurance, is we've been able to come up with the solution where you're going to be able to add enhanced benefits, so actually better benefits, and have no 
uh, rate increases passed on to your employees. So the um, enhanced benefits that we're talking about are keeping your strong network that you have with your um, UMR is the TPA or the third party administrator. So keeping that strong network called the Choice Plus Network, that stays your network with tier one, excuse me, tier two providers, but there's an added enhanced network that's within it. It's not a narrower network, it's actually the same <coughs> network, but certain providers have agreed to better discounts. And that's better discounts for the employees when they're going in for care, as well as for the district when the care actually goes to the district's responsibility. So by having this network within a network, it's allowing the district to actually have enhanced benefits. So I'll, I would like to explain the network a little bit further for the committee. Um, the Nexus network is a nationwide network. So again, it's all of Choice Plus, but in the state of Wisconsin, it's just down in this southeast Wisconsin corner. They're looking, it's, when I say they, I'm talking about United Healthcare Group, they're looking to expand it, but with the provider systems that have agreed to it, it's really highly uh, beneficial in southeast Wisconsin. So in Wisconsin, you can see the counties that are in blue there are all that are part of this, uh, of this program at this point, this nexus. The hospital systems that we're talking about are Aurora, Children's, and Fredert Medical College. So any of anybody who's using those providers are going to be able to get enhanced benefits and bigger savings. So outside of those blue areas, there are still tier one providers. I'll give an example. I actually live in the Green Bay area. My son lives in San Diego. We can still find these tier one providers by looking at our, um, the doctors that are considered tier one. So they've agreed to better discounts outside of Southeast Wisconsin. So over in, Again, my son in San Diego, he's able to find tier one providers there too. So it's those hospital systems, that's kind of the root of it, right, in Southeast, but then there are other providers elsewhere. So those uh, retirees still can have the enhanced benefits, out, even if they're living in Florida or Arizona or wherever they chose to retire. So the way the program works with Nexus is we kind of have two, diff we have two different tiers you have your tier one, which is that Aurora Freighter Medical College and Children's, and they have a deductible that's the exact same deductible as tier two, and everybody has a shared out-of-pocket maximum. It's kind of, I maybe should have flip-flopped these two slides that we'll get to next, but anytime someone is using Freighter, Aurora, uh, Freighter Medical College, Aurora or Children's, or any other tier one provider outside of Southeast Wisconsin, they're all gonna have better benefits. They're gonna have lower co-pays. They're gonna have a lower out-of-pocket max, uh, a lower out-of-pocket maximum when they're staying there. They're gonna have better just discounts overall. So if they're on an HSA plan, they're gonna pay less. If people don't use tier one providers, they still have the exact same benefits they have. So if I can flip to the next slide, I think that's probably a better visual for you. Tier two, this is your, you have two different co, two different plans in the district. You have a copay plan and you have an HSA plan. Tier two with the plan that the district would like to move forward with for 2025 is exactly as your plan stands now. You don't have any changes. You don't have changes to your pharmacy. You don't have changes to most of your copays. You don't have changes in your deductible. You don't have changes in your out-of-pocket maximum. It stays the same. So no matter where anyone is doctoring right now, they're, they're, nothing could change for them. For the, and nothing's going to change for the worst. In fact, if anybody is using Aurora, Freighter Medical College, or Children's, they actually are going to have improved co-insurance. Just as a quick refresher of what co-insurance means is... Uh, Co-insurance means after you get to your deductible, what is shared between the district and the insurance company versus the employees. Right now, everybody has an 80% co-insurance. So once I, Michelle, 
if I'm on the copay plan, once I get to my $3,000 deductible, if I had to go back in for some type of a surgery, the insurance company, in this case, it's really the district, would pay 80% and I would only pay 20. That's how a co-insurance works. That stays the same as it is right now. But if I were using Aurora, Freighter Medical College, or Children's, I, my co-insurance is actually gonna be at 100%. So Michelle, now if I have a, I've hit my $3,000 deductible and I need to go in for a knee scope and I use one of these tier one providers at Aurora, I don't pay anything anymore. On your current plan, I would pay 20%. If I, with, with this Nexus, move to Nexus or partnership with Nexus, and I'm using that same doctor if they're a tier one doctor, I would pay nothing extra. So the way the plan works is really an enhancement for all of your families that are already using Aurora, Freighter Medical College and Children's, which is more than 80% of your claims are already there. All of those people are seeing an enhancement. Anybody who's using Ascension or ProHealth, they're not gonna see a difference. So by making that shift, by adding in the nexus, it's not taking anything away, it's adding in the nexus, you're able to provide your members an, an improved benefit and no increase in costs. Um, it's important to note that there are some things that it doesn't matter if it's in tier one or tier two, because there are some uh, situations, an emergency room visit, doesn't matter where you're going, it's tier one. If you have a mental health provider that's at Ascension, doesn't matter. If that mental health provider is in that work today, they're in tier one today, tomorrow. So there's um, some of those things that really kind of cause people a little bit of concern, like, well, gosh, you know, I really like this doctor because um, it's really hard to get into behavioral health specialists, per, ex, especially. You don't have to worry that that stays. It's really the services that are kind of a choice where if I'm having, an, if I need that knee scope, I can go to Ascension if I want to, and I'll pay my 20% just like I'm doing today. If I don't want to pay 20%, I might go have that knee scope done at Aurora, Greater Medical College, or Children's. So that's the kind of the, the enhancement uh, that goes along with the Nexus uh, network that's getting added to the current network. Are there questions about how that plan works? Or I don't know if that's, if there's, without being able to see, I can't read the room quite well. <laughs> yeah, the question will direct it to Mike. And yeah. So just to be clear, they don't have to pick between tier one and tier two up front. It's as you go. As you go. And if I pop back, that's where it's important to know. It doesn't matter. I could go to some tier one and some tier two. It's all going into my same out-of-pocket maximum. So you can see that the impact on the medical rates um, are the same. So your members are going to be seeing no increases in their rates. So what they're paying per paycheck uh, or per month, it, you won't, they won't notice anything this year. And I know that that was, you know, with last year, there were some um, unexpected things because of the way, um, the, when the initial um, contract for stop loss had to get renegotiated, and we had to make some changes. This year, um, no changes in rates and only the opportunity to have some of those improved benefits by using those Nexus providers. Additionally, the, the dental and the vision rates don't need to change. Those plans are running very well, so there's no changes in how those, the plans that are getting offered or the rates that the employees are gonna be paying or the district. When it comes to the last item, which is the life and disability, we're looking at some possible opportunities for savings. The current carrier that the district uses is NIS, National Insur Insurance Services. Um, and then there's another carrier called Mutual of Omaha or maybe we're gonna be able to split some of the benefits and potentially save the district some money on life insurance and the employees may be a better benefit on the short term. So that piece is a little bit still in, work, in the works, um, but 
the good news is there, we're not talking about increases for your staff at, at all. And when it comes to the district, we're just looking for some savings opportunities. And, and I would just add the um, uh, insurance, health, and dental. Um, the reason we're here tonight and the, the timing of things is that uh, from here we'll go to board um, that will set in motion an open enrollment meeting on October 29th. Uh, two sessions, one at 3.30, one at 4.30 at Kennedy Middle School. Any of you are, interest, uh, are welcome to attend. Um, that will be followed by an open enrollment window in early to mid-November, uh, all prepping us for a January 1 uh, new plan year. So. Um, that is in motion. That's why where we're at right now is it's very important to be here today talking through this. Um, we also today were um, developing and organizing ideas around a new <coughs> wellness platform. Um, we, we're, we've made pretty good progress. We're not ready to share that with you right now, but we will. Um, we're excited about what that will mean for employees um, and what that potentially will mean for our program or for our, our health insurance offering and um, obviously working towards improved health and therefore improve rates moving forward. So that's where we're at. Um, anything else on your end, Michelle? Nope, just let me know if any questions come up and what, what the committee thinks. It'll be interesting to, um, to get the input on from the staff I can tell you that this has been a very well-received program, adding um, a Nexus Tier 1 level that can give members an opportunity to save because they're the ones that will see that savings first um, when they don't have any kind of a co-insurance um, any longer if they choose to use those providers. So, all right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Bye. <clears throat> Okay, um, if you have no questions, we would ask to move forward. I believe the recommendation should be a motion um, to go to the full board. <coughs> um, if we could do that. We've got all entertained a motion for <coughs> item five under insurance and annual benefits. I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed UMR options for health insurance coverage for the 2025. Shouldn't that be 2025? Should be, yeah. Okay, I'll start again. I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed UMR options for health insurance coverage <coughs> for the 2025 plan year and dental vision plans through De Delta Dental and Delta IMED in the Germantown School District for the 2025 plan year with all costs noted in the document provided and send this motion on to the full board. I will second. The first by Tracy is second by Ms. Higginbotham. Any discussion? Mr. Reuter, Dr. Reuter. Thank you. I'd just like to, you know, share that two years ago, right? Two years ago, I, the yeah. self-funded journey, you know, there's, there's, as you engage in something as a school board and as a school district administratively, there's, there's some unknown, right? And there's, there's concern about changing the status quo. Um, and the patience of the board um, and administration over the last two years. You heard it clear from Michelle this evening that it's improved benefit with no extra cost to the employees and we see no increase in rates. And as we mature through self-funded, this is value add to the district from a financial standpoint and still giving our, our staff a quality um, insurance package. So I appreciate the board's um, patience as we've gone on this journey for the last two years and Mike, your leadership around that. good any other yeah I think there's <clears throat> when we when we went on this journey I think there was obviously some nervousness from our side of the world just with what that might look like I know that there was a lot of nervousness with uh, staff as far as what what this would all mean hopefully they look at this as a positive um, uh, with regards to certainly it's not going to cost them anymore that's that by itself is is uh, a good thing, especially in today's world. So, any other comments, questions? No, it just looks like more continued creative solutions <coughs> to a, a problem that's on the rise across the country. I mean, when we see 
increases going up nationally as a pattern and we're able to hold standard or reduce costs for our staff it's fantastic yeah there's a very strategic relationship with with r and r to get involved with and we're seeing the fruits of that already absolutely the insurance industry is coming under pressure they've been raising rates so much that uh they, they now have to produce more benefits, and I think we're reaping the rewards of it now, especially being in the area of Southwest Wisconsin, our entire identifying that with Nexus. So, right. Yeah. yeah I t it's a win all the way around, I see right now. So, so we have a motion on the table to approve the proposed UMR position for health insurance coverage for 2025 plan year and dental and vision through plans for Delta Dental, Delta I Med of Germantown School District. For the 2025 plan year with all costs noted in the document provided i'll take a uh, i'll take a vote on that all in favor say aye. aye 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 any opposed say no mike did you want to say something i i think it's important to add um we will and i don't know that the board meeting will be the place for this but we will through the open enrollment meeting um spend an awful lot of time with staff around what this change is relative to the plan. Um, adding more than ever, this is a very, very positive thing, but it will require um, uh, some clear uh, instruction, some clear education on, on what this means. And you're, you're talking about the meeting that's going to be at Kennedy on the 29th at Correct. 3rd in the gap. Yep. Is Michelle going to be joining us for that? Michelle will be running. So she'll be there to answer all the questions yep. that the teachers and employees have. Yep. I think we're in good hands that way. You follow up with an email. I know you invited us to those meetings, but follow up with the date and time for all those. Sure. Thanks. Yep. All right. I heard three yeas. No opposed. That motion passes. And then we will now go back up to reports and updates and start with our monthly staffing update. And Mr. Nowak will provide the details on that. Thank you. Um, the staffing update looks a little differently than it has in previous months, which is um, good. Um, I will point out that um, from a teaching staff perspective, uh, we are we currently have uh, no openings. Um, I don't know, vacancies, I should say. Um, if you remember back the last time we did this, there was a vacancy for a part time art position, which was uh, in the ballpark of like 0.3. Uh, we have creatively worked with uh, one of our elementary art teachers to um, cover that excess um, with overloads. And um, he is uh, happy to do it. He understands kind of what's at play. And, um, you know, we're, we're confident that uh, it will mean our kids are going to, I'm sorry, music. And our, our music students are not are going to get um, uh, just what they need. So um, that's where we're at. Um, and then with that, as we progress through the year with elementary music, we will still leave the door open for possibly like at the semester point. If it's logical then to try to uh, have a, a part-time music teacher come in, we would do that. Um, because it's such a small sliver of a position, um, it really is one of those that's just going to require the right candidate. Somebody who, you know, maybe is looking for something very little, wants to, wants to work a day and a half a week or something like that, um, that's what we would do. So, um, relative to uh, support staff and professional technical staff, uh, I've listed the vacancies. You can see that um, the communications position is still open. Dr. Ryder, do you want to speak to where we're at with that at all? Um, yeah, we have had one round of applicants, and we're not going to settle for just anyone. Um, big shoes to fill with uh, Mandy's departure, um, but we're working towards filling that. We've had uh, multiple applicants over the last week. We've, um, we've um, engaged through Indeed website where we're looking to find someone with a communications and um, marketing background so more to come with that miss miss race is also um needs still being contracted to do some of our website work and communications on the side until we fill that position with a full-time person very good 
Uh, and then the, the remainder, uh, we're looking at the uh, need for special ed aides um, at uh, MAC, at the high school, and at Kennedy. Um, those are positions that in an ongoing way we've been trying to fill. We also have a copy center position, a supervisory aid. Um, we're working on filling these. Um, you know, historically there's been turnover with these employees that uh, we're trying to work through. Um, the bottom chart is uh, references of teaching moves, which uh, teaching reasons for teaching uh, vacancies or resignations because we haven't had any, uh, it's blank at the time. So um, that's where we're at right now. Do you have any questions? Any questions regarding staffing update? So you were talking about the music. Uh, are we just going to revisit that at some point to see if this teacher that is kind of picking up the overload, yeah. he enjoys it and wants to continue to do that, is that gonna play a factor in there? Or are we just automatically I, going to? I, I think um, the answer overall is yes to that. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm, I'm, he's actually approached us about uh, taking on the role, and um, we're very confident in his abilities and, and what he'll bring to the position. So I think we maybe need to see where this goes. He was very open to honest discussion as we progress around you know if this is really, really difficult to do. You know, he would let us know, um, and so on and so forth. So well, it's a benefit if he's, you know, looking forward to doing it. It's going to be a win-win for everybody. If yep. For that position. Yeah. So um, that's where we're at. Any other questions? All right. We'll move from staffing update to retention or teacher retention report. <coughs> you have in front of you a. Uh, teacher retention report. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know if it's probably the fourth year we've done this, um, where we present historical data around uh, teacher turnover. Um, in addition to what you see on the chart, um, I've also included some comparative information from um, what's called SPAM, uh, School Personnel Administrators of the Metro Milwaukee area. Uh, we submit our, our data to a, a collective uh, survey and we you know, learn about where we're at. We I did include some information um, about where Germantown is and, and what I'll get to is that we're very much in a, uh, what I would call a, an average position relative to teacher turnover that's occurring. Um, I'm sorry, real quick. Yeah. You, you make that statement average Per spam, just correct in yeah. that area. Yep. Because you've also attached the Wisconsin policy. Correct. Yep. And I'll, okay, I'll so speak that's to, that. to yep. that. Okay. Um, so, as you look at the chart, um, the chart um, there's a few things that you know, come to mind. And over the last couple years, the number of resignations um, you see are higher than previous years, which you know, is, is obviously of concern. Um, when we look at the number of people pursuing new positions uh, from the end of 23, 24 to the beginning of 24, 25, we had 15 teachers that are going to other districts in new teaching roles. Uh, likewise, last year at this time we had 11 so that's, you know, um, relative to what you see in previous years to that, those numbers are relatively high. When we look at those numbers in the metropolitan area, in the Milwaukee metropolitan area, we are very average in that regard. So um, it, what it's telling us, and some of the districts that have very, very similar numbers or even higher numbers are districts that are seen as relatively prominent districts that are high achieving um, districts that we've seen people going to so it what it tells us that is that we're in a, a new place we're in a, a, a time of uh, competition a time where teachers recognize and know more about surrounding districts and uh, what they're paying and what they're um, offering um, and what positions are available. 
likewise, you know, to that point, we're in this place now of people uh, reaching out to teachers, recruiting teachers to come. Um, that obviously can be concerning, but it's sort of the reality of where we are and how we, we do business. So you know, we'll continue to work in that regard and, and trying to retain. We've done some things relative to the compensation model that we think uh, will, will keep us ahead or below that average in this regard, but that this is a constant work that we'll be going through. Dr. Ryder, anything from your end you've yeah. met with your superintendent? Yeah, th this, is a, this is an ongoing concern, I think, across the, the region, if not state, and even nationally, as less people are going into the profession, so re recruiting and retaining is extremely important. Um, I would ask, you know, if you didn't have a chance to read the entire attached Wisconsin Policy Forum from last, it's from a year ago, actually, um, to take a look at that, anyone that's viewing at home or, or looking at this, because um, when you look at the the data from a statewide perspective from 2009 to 2023, um, 11 and <coughs> percent was the turnover rate for teachers in the state of Wisconsin that climbed to 15.8. Obviously, as my, Mr. Nock laid out on this table, we're well below that average, but that doesn't mean we're okay with that, right? So when we think about the presentation we just had regarding re insurance and benefits, as well as salary and increase and some of the stuff the board has acted on in the last year when it comes to um, compensation, those are all aspects that we think about for long term to lower that number. Um, however, we do know that the barriers exist of, um, it's a different game now um, with, with educators. Um, if you dig, dive deep into this, um, the Wisconsin Policy Forum as well, it talks about administrator turnover, and that's even higher than it's ever been as well. So it's not just about teachers, it's about all staff. And I, I appreciate Mr. Nock laying out the data here um, from a desegregated standpoint, because often a number gets thrown out there publicly that states that we have a high uh, turnover rate, but when employees decide to retire and enact their state retirement pension, as well as the district um, retirement plan that we have that many districts in the area have abandoned, um, that's not about turnover. That's about someone choosing to retire from the profession. So when those numbers get clumped together, it's false information and, and not accurate data. Um, this, this data and this is about voluntary turnover, whether someone chooses to leave or they've chosen to resign because um, we've asked them to resign. So I think that's important for the general public to understand as well. Yeah, uh, that's exactly Great what I was going to clarify, the voluntary piece of this. That's really what this focuses on. Um, right, it's not someone who's worked for the district for 35 years and is retiring from the profession. Right. That's not, that's not retention. Right, right. Um, the, the, the other piece to this, and I'll build on this, is the, 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 the SPAM group, the metropolitan Milwaukee area. Those are the school districts and the HR directors that I work with on uh, a weekly basis we're you know uh, calling one another exchanging information and whatnot um, we meet on a monthly basis um, there are surveys like this that are built from this group um, that's one to me that as I think about people who are leaving <coughs> or going to other districts 95% of the time or more they're going to school districts in the metropolitan area Maybe if they're moving, you know, out of state or something like that, but for the most part, that is our competition. That is kind of where we should be looking at, and um, we are right at that average point. Um, the the data uh, deeper as you go to the next page. What I what I've done is, and it was just to build on to what we did last year. As we look over the last couple of years, where uh, the departures have occurred. Um, you see that special education is an area that we've we've had some people leave, and there are obviously different facets to special education, but that's one. Um, speech and language has been one where there's a lot of movement. That's one where we see a lot of recruiting. Um, this board has been seeing resignations come through and heard about people you know, going to surrounding districts in that particular area. Um, these are all things that we look at uh, <clears throat> very closely in terms of um, the difficulty of hires as we as we know you know we have vacancies that are occurring we know um, certain areas are going to be much harder to fill um, 
like special ed and uh, speech path positions, um, as you'll see. So um, <coughs> with that, we would open up to any questions. Not so much a question, but I did want to point out on page 10 of the Wisconsin Policy Forum, Mr. Barney was looking at the scatter chart there, which is very difficult to read, and I took some time and just uh, I, I can kind of, I took a screenshot that I can share with the board, but um, we fall under that line as a recipient district, meaning we aren't donating or giving other districts more teachers than we're receiving, and we're actually receiving more in versus sending out. So I thought that was an interesting point, especially since there's 400 <laughs> dots on that, uh, on that chart. Appreciate you bringing it up because I was going to point out that same. I think that's a telling piece of information. I mean, it may have it may have changed since August of 2023, but for 14 years, we could be considered a recipient district. We really do think um, our efforts with compensation will help in this area. Um, there's an awful lot of work put in to change that model. It was, as you know, it was a model that hadn't changed in hadn't been changed in 10 years. So what we did, we believe, will make a difference. And as we've said um, continually throughout, that change alone is not an end point. There's, there will be efforts to reassess those changes and on an annual basis uh, put forth considerations for additional modifications, whatever those may be. Great. Any other questions? Right. And let's move on to uh, enrollment update. Enrollment update. So, um, um, Dr. Reuter asked that we provide a uh, a look at um, our third Friday counts, and I in the background I provided some information around um, what those third third Friday counts mean. Um, how it impacts um, our funding and our budget. Um, these are numbers that when um, uh, last week as we were talking about this and we met with Ms. Altendorf uh, around um, which some of the numbers that she had, I mean, she has this information readily available. It's something she goes to on a very routine basis. So um, the chart that you that follows is um, very simply over the last three years, uh, our uh, fall through Friday counts and um, what they mean from a, a sort of a trending perspective. Um, you can see, um, you know, there's been some slight change relative to year to year, and you can also look at what this means uh, relative to specific grade levels and such. Um, <clears throat> Any questions? Just a reminder that third Friday count is a very important day in public <laughs> schools as uh, the calculations and the numbers of kids and the accuracy of that um, lead to what our state calculations are for funding, as well as it um, justifies and solidifies the staffing um, plan that we've put in place as a school district as well. And I, I shared with Dr. Reuter and um, some of you that have been on the board know we used to <coughs> include enrollment uh, updates on a very regular basis. Um, and, um, you know, if, if this is something that you want presented, we could do more of that. Um, this is more of a snapshot yeah. specifically of Third Friday. Um, or when it's really it might be a good January update when we do the third Friday count in Jan third week of January as well to see comparative to beginning enrollment to mid-year enrollment and what that fluctuation may or may not look like. Can you go over some of the, like the reporting aspects that go into third Friday <coughs> as far as what when we count? I think there's a misnomer if they're not in their seat, they don't count. Yeah, they have to have been in school 
prior or had access to education prior to the third Friday count. Um, so if we know a family's on vacation that day, there's communication from administration at the site level to say, you still have access to an educational resource, whether it's Google Classroom or something online. Um, so this is a representation of those who are, are fully attended within those first weeks of school, um, before and after that Friday. Um, it's every department in this building has some um, role in it. Melissa talk, works through the open enrollment piece, our open enrollment students in and out. Special education looks at, and people service looks at um, the totality of um, not only students in our seats in our physical buildings, but any alternative placement sites. Jake's office, teaching and learning, does the actual count, and then um, Brittany's office works through the financial alignment to that, and all hands on deck for that week of, week prior, week of, and week after, because then we have to <coughs> submit a very comprehensive report to the Department of Public Instruction. And then, not to mention, the most important is at the site level, our school secretary, obviously teachers taking attendance and accurate attendance, but our school school site secretaries um, compiling that data and making sure the information gets to who it needs to get here. Um, another topic that's kind of been raised to my ear is it seems the district has had a larger focus on residency mm -hmm. this year. Is that intentional or do you just we're being more vocal on how we reach out to ensure people have provided the appropriate proof of residency? Um, we owe it to every taxpayer in the school district that they're paying for the students of this school district to go to school. Um, we changed our online uh, verification process to put extra um, stops for verification of residency um, because it's not fun for administration and sometimes law enforcement or social workers to have to verify residency of families where sh we know don't live in Germantown but may have at one point and now we're not getting the state aid or state funding for that cost per pupil at the same level we should or should not be getting. Um, so we put more emphasis on following our policy relate and state statute related to you have to live in Germantown unless you went through the proper channels of open enrollment in order to receive a Germantown education. So it's not at the cost of those who live here and pay taxes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Comments? All right takes us through enrollment update anything you want to add to that or uh, no just as I said um, I think we could uh, work to revisit this in January um, likewise if there's interest in more frequent um, updates of that nature we're happy to do that some of that got down to the kind of the granular level of grade levels and classrooms and things like that but I'm open to hearing. I think the more data we have the more informed we stay <laughs> up to date and the better so I would encourage a follow-up report specific to the January count or end of year yeah however you guys see fit but yeah let's do that sounds good we'll move on to unfinished business of which we do not have any and that takes us to item 8 which is adjournment and I'll take a motion for that move to adjourn I'll second Mr. Pollock with a first, Ms. Higginbotham with a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will vote on whether we're going to adjourn or not. <laughs> All in aye. favor, say aye. 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 Hearing no opposed, the Germantown Personnel Committee meeting comes to a close at 515. 519. 519. 519. <laughs> we have good vision insurance. <laughs>